everybody on YouTube, it's Michael here again and this video is going to be the second and final part of the tutorial of the Yamaha PSR EW425 keyboard. Thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to show you on this here part two of the tutorial of the Yamaha PSR EW425 keyboard and that is registration memory so that you can save your settings for later use. Now there are eight banks of registration memories. Each bank contains four buttons giving you a total of 32 registration memories in which you can save your settings and call them up for later use. Now, hopefully you can see on the screen that it's currently set on bank one. And whenever we press the bank button here, it switches banks. So I press it once, it, it's bank two, bank three, bank four, bank five, six, seven, and eight. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. I know that the number is, it shows really little on the screen. Now, um, the registration memories, um, I have not done these settings myself, but these are the preset settings that were factory from the keyboard when it when it's new. So, so these are the factory settings but we can always change them and the style changes as well so and um, bank two as well So I'm just going to put these back to, oh, sorry. So yes, each bank of registration memories has presets, but you can rewrite them so that you can make your own registration memories. So I'm just going to make sure that everything's back to normal. Okay, so I will show that to you. So let's say that... Um, for this example, I'm going to fill up an entire bank. So bank one for this instance. Now we want to select a voice. So what if we want to select, say, like a steel guitar sound? Okay. And we want to select a style. Um, it doesn't really matter what style, this is because this is going to be an example so maybe this one turn on the a comp maybe change the variation so and maybe I want to add something else to it so maybe um, we'll go through the functions and change some of the main voice functions. So maybe the main voice volume. Turn it up a little bit. Exit that or we'll go to the main voice octave, but I'm going to leave it as is. Um, the main voice reverb level, maybe you want to change that a bit so it's more... <laughs> Main voice chorus, maybe add a little bit of chorus to the guitar. Maybe turn the chorus down a bit. So. Oh, main voice attack, release, cut off, but I'm gonna leave those as they are. Um, so that's just something, just very simple. Um, so I selected a voice and a style 
change a few things within the main voice. Once you're happy with your setting, we hold down this button along with one of these four buttons here. So if it's an example, I'm going to hold down the bank button and press number one. And then it says memory. OK, so that has been saved on this here. Bank one registration one. OK, and now moving on, we're going to make a registration setting for bank. I'm um, sorry for registration two. Bank one. OK, so this time what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say choose the grand piano sound and press the dual voice. So we got piano and strings. OK. And maybe if I want, I want to select harmony. So I've got So I've got harmony selected. And let's see what else can I change for this example? Yep, change um the style. So maybe this one. And maybe change it to variation A. Let's go through some more functions here. Um, function. Maybe change the dual voice volume. Turn it up a little bit. Oh, this, this time. I am going to turn it up an octave. And also what I'm going to do is that I am going to select a split voice. So, so we are definitely going to change that. So let's see here. Split voice. Maybe change it into a sort of an E piano. Um, if I can find one. One moment. How about... E P um cool E piano. Oh, what have I done here? Bear with me. Split voice. Okay. There we go. Maybe I need to change the octave of it. Maybe not that piano sound, um, E piano sound rather. Um, yeah, that's better. And now with the split voice, maybe I want to change the reverb level. Turn it up a bit because I think it's a bit too low. OK. Maybe add some chorus onto it. Okay. Okay, so I changed the split voice and the dual voice. Did a few little changes and changed a style. Once you're happy with your settings, we hold down the bank slash memory button along with one of these four buttons. And now we for this example I'm gonna hold down this button and press bank number two. Um, sorry, registration number two. So that's 
two registrations saved. So we've got this one here and this one. Okay, now moving on, we are going to make something for registration number three. Maybe have something more synthy this time, so. Okay. A turn off split. Okay, so with this um, sound, I am going to be changing some effects. So let's go to function. DSP type one, enter. So at the moment we've got delay. second okay so I've got a phaser DSP effect I'm also going to add DSP 2 to this and maybe have something like a let's see here Have a distortion effect. We're also going to select a style. Maybe take this one for instance. We're going to change the variation. We're going to turn the tempo up a bit. Okay, now. Let's see, shall we add anything else? What's that dual voice? Ah, punchy chords. Okay, we'll add that as a dual voice. Okay. Once you're happy with your settings, we hold down this here button along with one of these four buttons. I'm going to select three for this instance. So we got one saved for this one, this one, and this one. Okay, going to do one more example, then I filled up an entire bank of registration memories in bank one. Now, moving on, we're going to do some more examples. Maybe this time, we're going to turn off a comp and have split put that on to bass turn off DSP oh and also with a split voice we need to turn the octave down don't we there we go Okay, uh, maybe with the main voice, I'm going to select an organ sound. We are going to change DSP with the organ. So let's just go through them. DSP one type. So maybe have a sort of a rotary. So we've got organ, right hand, um, bass on the left hand. And I'm going to change the style, maybe change into sort of like a rock style. But this, but this time I'm not going to have any like 
backings. All it is just going to be the rhythms with the bass. So like this. I'm going to change the rhythm. Maybe change, maybe have that one. Tempo, I want to, that's it, default tempo. So we've got the organ, right hand, bass, left hand. And um, yeah, um, think of anything else that I can, don't think that there is anything else that um, I want to change. I've got no comp, just the rhythms turned on. Once you're happy with your setting, hold the bank slash memory button along with one of the four buttons. And for this instance, I am going to press registration memory number four. So there you go. That's all four registration memories of my own saved. It has obviously overwritten the factory set registration settings that when you get the keyboard out of the box, it comes with preset settings, which you can overwrite. Okay, so for the first registration memory, something very simple. We just got a rhythm and a steel guitar sound with some changing the effects like chorus and that. So I'll show you. And for registration memory number two, we've added we've added um, dual voice along with harmony. So I'll show that to you. Oh, and I've also did um, split voice. So. Okay, and um, registration free. I've um, added DSP one and DSP two. So here we go. So sped up the auto accompaniment tempo. And finally, with registration memory number four, I've added DSP. I've added a... Yeah, I've, I've added this DSP. I've added a bass for the left hand. And didn't use the comp button for the backings. All I get is rhythms. So I'll show that to you.
And in order to select a different bank of registration memories, you just press this button and on the screen it says bank two. Um, you got some more preset settings and there's bank number three. And so on. But for this example, I filled up bank number one with my own registration memories. So there you go. And that is registration memory. In which you can save your own settings to call them up for later use, which saves a lot of time so that you don't have to go through the settings again because they would have been saved on these registrations. Let's just put these back to normal. Here we go. And that is registration memories. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is portable grand with the portable grand button here. So this is going to be a very quick one. So let's just say that I change some different sounds, say, for example, I've got a, a, a guitar sound and I've also done this dual voice. So change that, um, maybe change it into, uh, no, okay. Um, like a bass. No, I will find one. Maybe do another guitar. And did a split voice. So I've changed everything. The dual, split and main voice. Um, but what if I want to get to the piano sound? Well, obviously there's categorised buttons here for the piano sound. But if you just want the piano sound and the piano sound only, even though I've got the split and dual voices as well as the guitar sound as a main voice um, to get back to piano simply just press the portable grand button here and there you go it takes you straight to the live concert grand piano sound so there you go and that is portable grand in which it takes you straight to the piano sound any changes you've done will be gone. Like I've oh, got a, the dual voice and split voice and the main voice has a different voice. Um, that will be gone once I press the portable grand button. It just takes you straight to the piano sound. And that is portable grand. OK, so the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is the real time control knobs. And the knob assign in which we can change the um, assignable of the um, control knobs here. So we've got three assign functions for keyboard, three assign functions for backing and one for the system. So I'll show that to you. So first of all, it's set to knob assign one, which is for the keyboard. And that will be resonance and cutoff. So... And we press knob assign and then we have the assign two, which is reverb and chorus. So. And the second one is chorus. Let's just change that so it's back to normal. OK. And now we um, press the knob assign button again. And then we have function three for the keyboard, which is DSP one parameter A and DSP one parameter B. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the sound. I'm going to go to function and change the DSP.
maybe have a flanger. Um, no, um, maybe have something else. I will find something. Yeah, how about an auto wire DSP? So and then we can change the DSP parameter A and DSP parameter B. So which I find is really cool. Uh, DSP parameter B. Okay, moving on. We press number sign, and then we're going to have um, the full function, uh, which uh, we have them um, four, five, six of the backing. So the backing, such as the styles and the groove creator patterns, which I will show you. And first of all, just like the keyboard section, resonance and cutoff. So I'll show that to you. Okay, and then we have number five, which is um, reverb and chorus. So notice we've got a lot more reverb on the drums. And when I turn it down, there's no reverb on the drums. And maybe some chorus. In, there we have um, um, knob assigned six, which is the volume ba um, volume balance and retrigger rate. But um, I'm not sure if the retrigger rate works on the styles. I think it only works for the groove creator patterns. Oh, let's just change the style. Um, bear with me. Sorry. Okay. I'll change. That's it. So it's all back to normal. Okay, so we've got volume balance. Retrigger rate, which retrigger rate, which doesn't work with the um, style. So I'm just going to go to Groove Creator because it works on here. Because the retrigger rate, you have to hold down the um, groove creator buttons here, so you get the retrigger rate. So, Okay, so we're going to go back onto the style, and that is 
setting that is knob assign number six, which is volume balance and retrigger rate. Okay, so finally, with the real time control knob with the knob assign, we have number seven, which is the system, and that is DSP2 parameter A and DSP2 parameter B. So I will show that to you. So I'm just going to find the sound and add DSP2 to it. So, so, nope. I will find one. Let so maybe take this one for example. Maybe change the DSP2 type. I'm going to change it to. Maybe change, um, yeah, cross delay, and then we can change the parameter of DSP2. Okay, and then we have DSP2 parameter B. just put these back to normal then we press knob assign button again and it goes back to number one assign which is the keyboard cutoff and resonance so there you go and that is the real-time control knobs with resonance and cutoff for the keyboard sounds and the backing such as the styles and the groove creator and the reverb and chorus for both keyboard and backing, uh, DSP one parameter A and B, um, retrigger and volume balance for the styles, and retrigger for the groove creator patterns, and the system DSP two parameter A and B. So there you go, and that is the real time control knobs. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is motion effect which is really cool for this keyboard. Um, we hold down the shift button so that we can get the different motion effect types. Um, we have a selection we got all, so it affects everything, the sounds, the rhythms, everything. And then going through, we've got the um, keyboard sample, the keyboard, sampling, style and groove creator, Style groove, yep. Yeah. So we've got loads to choose from. There are many different effects, as you can see. Um, I won't show you them all, but I will show you a few. I'll show you some of them. Okay, so we got all, so it will it will affect the whole of the keyboard. So I'll show that to you. So we got the ribbon. In order for it to work, we have to hold down the motion effect button. Because it's set to all, it also works with the sounds and the sampling. Okay, go through some more effects. So <laughs> there's that effect is basically sort of panning the keyboards from left to right speaker. Whoa. 
Whoa. That reminds me of the um, ribbon controller from the DJX. It really does sound like I'm using a ribbon controller. Hmm, I think that might sound better with the um, groove creator. That's cool. Okay, going through some other... So this time we've got the keyboard sample. I think that's what it means. It's... Oh, keyboard and sample. So if I select Groove Creator, nothing will happen. So that's um, the keyboard and sample effects. <laughs> cool. Show a couple more effects. <laughs> nice. Okay, and the next one we've got the keyboard. So that means that it only affects the sounds. It, it, it would affect nothing else but the sounds. Going through some more. Nice. Okay, going through some more. Um, and now we're on to sampling. So it will only affect the sampling. Okay, moving on. And now moving on here, we've got style groove, which I'm guessing it will affect only the styles and the groove creator. And the styles. There we got style groove a compliment. So it, it will only affect the accompaniment, like the backings. It won't affect the drums. And go to Groove Creator. The same thing goes to that as well. Notice how the drums are not affected, just the backing. Okay, moving on to some more. Let's see here.
And now, style groove drums, so it will only affect the drums. And with the Groove Creator, again, it only affects the drums. And then we're back to, back to all. So there you go. And that is the motion effect in which each part has many different effects which is really cool for this um keyboard um motion effect is actually new to the ew425 it didn't appear on the ew410 and we got a selection of motion effects for all types um keyboard and sample keyboard sampling style and groove creator Style and Groove Creator Accompaniment and Style and Groove Creator Drums. So there you go. And that is Motion Effect. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you and that is Mega Boost and the Master Equalizer types. So you have like different um, digital equalizers. So I will show that to you. Um, first of all, I am going to show the Mega Boost effect, which is really handy because what that does is that it makes the keyboard louder. So I'm just going to add the drums. And when you press Mega Boost once, hopefully you'll notice that the keyboard is louder. I'll press it again. And it's even louder. Press it again and it goes back to default. And now here's something else that I want to show you um, about the Mega Boost, the Mega Boost example. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug a pair of headphones on this keyboard right now because there's something else that I want to show you real quick. So let me just find the headphones jack. There we go. Um, hopefully you can see on the screen, but when you've got headphones connected to the keyboard and you um, select Mega Boost, notice on the screen it says... Oh, sorry. No, my bad, I'll put that in. Sorry, I'll put that in the sustain for some reason. I'm trying to find the headphones jack. Is that it? Sorry, bear with me. Give me a moment. I'm going to find the headphones. The headphones, Jack. Is that it? There we go. Sorry about that. OK, so notice um, I've got the headphones in now. And when I go to press the Mega Boost button, because I've got headphones on, because I'm not using the keyboard speakers. It says, can't use, because I've got a pair of headphones. So I go for Mega Boost, can't use. But when I take the headphones out, I press Mega Boost, and I can use it again. Yeah, sorry about that earlier, I was trying to find the um, headphones jack. And that was just something that I wanted to show you. Okay, so that's the Mega Boost, and now we're going to move on. We're going to move on to the Master Equalizer type with the digital equalizers. So we hold down Shift and press the Mega Boost button, and it calls up the different equalizer types that we can have. Um, this is part of the Master Equalizer function. So we've got Standard, which will sound like this. We do have different types of equalizers.
standard piano bright and mild we're going to put that back and that's um the different master equalizer types we got four we got four equalizer types we got the standard piano and um, we'll see if one's bright and mild so there you go and that is the mega boost in which we can make the keyboard louder won't work if you've got headphones connected and the master equalizer types okay so now the next thing that i'm going to show you and that is the microphone functions now i know i've used this microphone on my previous tutorial video and that was to show the example of the DSP2 but now I'm going to show the microphone functions so we've got this here mic button so we've got mic and vocal talk and um, mic vocal slash talk slash mute at the moment it's currently on mute because I've just um, I've turned it off so we just turn it on and now I'm talking into the microphone with reverb and when it's um, when you press it again it'll be on to talk mode so now I won't get any reverb you just get a dry sound no no reverb just my normal voice and we press it again to turn it off and now we turn it back on okay so that's the microphone example um, so yes we hold down shift button along with the microphone button and we can actually change the volume of the microphone. But we don't want to turn it right up because you might get feedback. And now I'm turning it down. Okay. Also at the back of the um, keyboard, there's the, micro the, the microphone gain button. So I can turn it up and down. There we go can't hear myself now now I can okay and now I'm going to go through some functions of the microphone so mic volume and now we have the microphone we have the microphone pan pot so it's it's currently it's currently on center um, but if we put it to right 63, hopefully the camera will pick up the microphone sound. But that's currently, my voice is currently um, heard. Oh, sorry. My voice is currently heard on the right hand side of the keyboard while the reverb is on the left hand side. And now it is on the left hand side whilst the reverb is on the right hand side so that's the, the microphone pan pot there we go we are, i'll put it back on to um center and now we have microphone reverb so if i put it right up there you go the microphone reverb is at its maximum And I put it right down and there'll be no reverb at all. So we can change the microphone reverb. There you go. Getting some reverb now. As I put it up, the reverb gets stronger. There we go. Sounds like I'm in a large room or a hall. Okay, so I'm going to put that back to its default. There we go. And then we have microphone chorus. So here is the microphone chorus. So I'll get chorus within my voice. Hope, there we go. Um, hopefully, there we go. I'll put it up to the um, maximum. So now I've got a lot of chorus on my voice. So that's the, the microphone chorus. There you go. The, the chorus is going down now. So there's no, there's no chorus. I'm going to put it up again. And there'll be lots of chorus. There we go. So that's the microphone chorus. 
I'm not sure what that function is. Blank cut. Let's have a look. I wonder if that has anything to do with the microphone. Testing. Hello. Testing. No, I don't know what that is, but that, um, I don't think that has anything to do with the microphone. So there you go. And that is the microphone functions in which you can have, there's the microphone button with the mic vocal talk and mute. It's currently on mute now, even though the headphones are connected, along with the microphone functions. So that is the example of the microphone and its functions. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is pedal functions in which you can connect a sustain pedal to the keyboard and you can change the different functions. So right now it is currently set to sustain. So I'm, I'm, holding, the pe I'm holding down the pedal with my foot now and we're getting sustain. But there are other functions that we can use within the pedal. So I'll show that to you. We just press function and um, I've already messed around with it. So the functions are automatically on pedal function. So we've got four choices of pedal functions. First off is sustain. The next one is arpeggiator hold. The third one is sustain slash um, sustain plus arpeggiator hold. And the fourth one is art, which is for the super articulation light voices so i'll go through those with you so first of all we got sustain the second one we have arpeggiator hold so what we need to do is go to the harmony section and we're going to select an arpeggiator so i am going to select an arpeggiator so if you just bear with me so yeah okay so here's the arpeggiator and now with the sustain pedal i'm gonna hold it down with my foot and whenever i press the keys for the arpeggiator um it will hold it even if i let go of the keys So there's that pedal function. Okay, going to move on. And now we have sustain plus arpeggiator hold. So with the arpeggiators, it will have some sustain as well. And finally, within the pedal functions, we have art, which is for the super articulation light voices. Um, I know I've showed the super articulation light voices on my previous tutorial video with this here articulation button. So we've got two choices. We can use the articulation button or we can use the foot pedal. So with the voices, I'm going to select a super articulation light voice. So we've got the nylon guitar harmonics. <laughs> And now I hold down the pedal. Notice that I'm not pressing the articulation button. So here's the articulation button. And now I'm holding down the pedal. The same effect when I'm holding down the pedal. And let's just do one more example. And uh, now we have the distortion guitar. Um, this reminds me of the, um, with, 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 with the pedal, the super articulation light. This reminds me back when the Tyros 2 was first launched. Um, there was an articulation jack pedal so that you connect a sustain pedal to the articulation output so that you can have the body taps and the 
slide frets and so on. So with the so there you go. I'm holding. I'm. I'm. I press the um, pedal with my foot. Which is pretty much the same thing as on the Tyros 2. So there's the articulation light button. And now there's me holding the pedal with my foot. Okay, I'm just going to put things back to normal. And there we go. So there you have it. And that is the pedal function in which we can assign the pedal to four different things or four different functions. First of all is sustain. The second one is arpeggiator hold. The third one is sustain plus arpeggiator hold. And finally, art with the super articulation light buttons. With the super articulation light voices rather, sorry, which, which, um, which is basically the same as pressing the articulation light button here. Um, let me just um, let me just figure out something quick. Um, we we'll go to pedal function, even if it's not an articulation light voice, because if I, if I hold down the articulation light button here, it will act as a modulation wheel. What if I I wonder if the same thing will apply if I hold down the pedal. Okay, so it does. So that's something new I've just learnt. So there you go. And that is the pedal functions. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is song control with functions such as song volume, demo group, and melody voice change, etc. Okay, so for the song functions to work, we need to select song. And the functions I'm going to go through with the functions here. Um, so I'm just going to go through them. Um, yep, yeah, the song volume, melody voice change. And finally, with the demo, um, the demo group and the play mode, which is all to do with the songs. Okay, so first of all, um, oh, sorry, I might have gone a bit too far. Okay. Okay, so first of all, it's the song volume. So I'm going to play the song. And change the volume. Okay, so that's song volume. And now the next one is melody voice. So with the melody voice, you can actually change the melody. You can change the voice of the melody of the song. So I'll show that to you. So the melody is currently on piano. Um, so maybe if I want to choose, say, an electric piano. Yeah, because I've got to go through the um, voices as got to go through voices like that and then press function and melody voice change to change it so i'm going to select a sound so okay i'll show that to you whilst the song is playing so you can know exactly what to do so and then we just change our song i'm um, sorry change our um sound so i'm going to choose this one press function and then press enter that changes the um, voice of the melody of the song or maybe if I want to go for like a guitar sound or one more example what if I want to go for a brass sound Okay, um, it also applies to other songs, so I'm going to do one more example. 
So maybe the E piano demo. Change the voices of that. So what if I want something in the choir and, oh, sorry, wrong song. Oh, there we go. Um, what if I want to go on to a, um, on the choir and pad? Okay, so I've got Shubiduba selected, press function, melody voice change, and enter. Okay, one more example. I'll go, this time I'm going to go for the percussion and drums, and I'm going to choose a marimba. Function, melody voice, enter. Okay, so that's melody voice change in which you can change the sounds of the melody of the built-in demonstration songs. Okay, moving on. Let's just put that back. Moving on with the functions, the, the, demo, the, the song functions. Okay, so we've got here demo group. So I won't actually show you, but I'll explain what it does. Okay, so demo group. So we've got here demo, preset, user, download, USB and audio. And when demo is selected here, it will play the three main demonstration songs repeatedly. So the three main demo songs, so it will go to demo song one, two, three, then one, two, three, repeatedly. And preset, which will play all 30 demonstration songs on this keyboard. So once it goes, once it gets to 30, once song 30 has finished, then it will go back to song one, all the way to 30, and then one again. It will just be repeat, repeated, basically. So it's preset and user. Um, this keyboard has 10 user songs. For you to record your own songs, which I will show later on in this video. Um, basically, when user is selected, if you've got, say, for example, four user songs recorded, it will play those until the last one, and it will go back to the first one. So, for example, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It just loops like that. And we have download. Um, when that's selected, any MIDI files that you have transferred from your computer to the, to the keyboard that will also be um, played back in order and any MIDI files when, when, when USB is selected when um, yeah when USB is selected any MIDI files on a USB stick will be played in order and finally any audio that you have on a USB stick, that will also be be played back, depending on how many songs you have. So it's it's almost like a playlist sort of thing, but not quite. And um, I will also show the audio recording later on in this video. So that's the demo group. And one more thing, and we have here play mode. Um, it's not currently active at the moment what if i select song play mode no okay well basically play mode is um when you choose the group so for example preset um one of the functions is that it will play all 30 demonstration songs in the order from 1 to 30 and then another function on there called random which means that it will play all 30 demonstration songs but in any random order so it could play for example demo one um, demo one or after that it'll be sort of like demo nine and then after that demo five etc so they'll be played in any order so there you go 
and that is the song functions with the song volume, melody voice change and demo group. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you and that is the speaker control. So we go to function and we go to the speaker control. It just says speaker and we press enter and we've got three options. We've got HP SW, which means headphone switch. And we have on and we have off. So um, I'm just going to go through with you on what they do. So headphones switch. Um, that function is that the keyboard speakers will not sound when you have headphones. So I've got a pair of headphones with me now to show you this um, example. So notice that. But when I put in a pair of headphones. When I put in a pair of headphones. Hopefully you can hear that, but the headphones are playing. Okay, so I'm going to leave these headphones in because the next one is set to on, which means it doesn't matter if I've got a pair of headphones connected, which I do. The sound will come from both the headphones and the speakers. So that's coming from the headphones and speaker. Oh, one second. Headphones a bit of a muddle here. There we go. So it's coming from the headphones and speaker. Though you can't really tell because, well, because the keyboard speakers are turned on and you'll be hearing that more than you would with the headphones. And now I'm just going to disconnect those. And finally, the last one is off which means that the keyboard speakers will not sound. Um, this would be useful if you've got a, um, a hi-fi connected with the auxiliary outputs, which are at the back of the um, keyboard. So if you've got, say, two big speakers connected to the auxiliary outputs, then you can actually turn off the keyboard speakers, as I did, and only have the big speakers play. Um, although it says off, um, it will play if I if I connect headphones to it. Not the um, keyboard speakers itself, but the headphones. So we have headphone switch. So the keyboard plays with with, with the internal speakers. And the key, the keyboard speakers um, disconnect when you connect a pair of headphones. And we have on. So the speakers will stay on regardless if, if you've got headphones connected or not. And the last one is off. So the keyboard speakers will not play. It will only play with um, external speakers via the auxiliary output or if you have headphones. So there you go. And that is the speaker control. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is scale tune, in which you can tune each key like C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, etc. You can tune each note, which is ideal for Arabic music. So I'm going to select a sound. Um, for this instance, I'm just going to select a string sound. So it doesn't matter what sound I use um, for this example. OK, so we're going to go to function. And we are going to go to the scale. OK, so the keyboard already has some built in scales. I'll show you them. So we have equal which is normal so and 
and we have pure major, pure minor, bayet, um, if that's how it's pronounced correctly. Um, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, if that's not how it's pronounced. And rast. So first of all, we have the built-in pure major. Notice how some of the keys, some of the notes are out of tune. And we have pure minor. And we have bayat or bayat. That some of the, the notes are out of tune. And finally, we have rast, which is, uh, I think that's, um, if I remember, if, if I'm correct, I think bayat is Indian and rast is Arabic. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know a lot about Arabic music and that myself. So, so here's rast. Okay, so I'm going to go back to pure major. That's the scale. And now we have um, the function bass note in which we can change the notes of the um, presets. So for this example, okay, so we've got like C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, and so on. So whenever I change them, So I'll choose D this time. It sort of changes. Let's try a, another one. Let's go back to, say, Rast and go back to bass note. Go back to C. Oh, C sharp. Or maybe F. Or A flat. Okay, so that's the... Um, bass note in which you can change the bass notes of the preset um, scale and now moving on we have two notes oh first of all let's just go put that back to equal so it's all normal okay scale bass note and two notes so that you can tune your own notes and make your own sort of arabic scale or similar. So two note and you know C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, etc. So all of the all of the notes. Um so for this example, um I'm not gonna change the tuning on all notes, but I will do some of them. So first of all, C is selected, we exit that, and then we go to tune and we can actually tune that note. So I'll show that to you. So I'm gonna tune it sort of halfway, so. So that's the C note tuned. And we're gonna go back, go to tune note and this time I'm going to tune, let's say, F, for instance. Exit that, and we're going to tune F. And maybe I'll put it down the tune to minus. So now it will sound like this. Okay, and now we're going to do another note. 
uh, which note shall we do this time? Maybe I will do A. Okay, exit that tune, and we're going to change the tuning of the A note. So I'm going to put this one up a bit higher. So it's, now we've got C, F and A all tuned. So here's what it will sound. Okay, now how about some sort of the um, flats and sharps? I'll do a couple of those. So, two notes. Uh, maybe I will do, say, a B flat. So this note. Go to go back to tune, and we're going to we're going to tune that up about here. So now it'll sound like. Okay, one more example um, for the for the um, tuning. But this time we're going to select E flat. So this note, and maybe put it down minus, say here. So now I've did all the. Um, manual scale tuning myself now it'll sound like this of all the changes i've made And so on. Okay. Now, unfortunately, there is no user part. There's no users so that you can actually store and save your own sort of um, scale tune. The only way to do that is to save it via registration. So let's just go back to the scale. Well, actually, I better not change anything yet. Um. You only have the five presets. You don't have any uses in which you can create and store your own scale tune. So I'll play that back one more time with my... Um... And if I change the sound... It doesn't matter what sound I use. The scale tune will, will remain the same. Or maybe woodwind. Or maybe something else. Maybe like... Or maybe not um, vibes. Not really suitable sounds, but it's just an example. But as I said before, unfortunately, you can't save your own scale tunes on a user because it has no users. The only the only way to save what you've done is to store it on a registration memory. So there you go. And that is the scale tune with the preset scale tune types and also the facility to make your own scale tune which is um yeah you to create your own scale tunes um now the, the scale tune um you can make each individual note you can tune each individual note um which is suitable for arabic music and similar so that is scale tune 
and the scale tune functions. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is one touch setting with this here voice button. Now, each style has a one touch setting that gives you a suitable sound for the style that you're playing. Uh, let's just say that I change into a different voice, like say for example, a guitar and change a dual voice. But what if I want to go to the styles one touch setting? Well, you can scroll down to zero, which is the styles one touch setting, or an easier way to do it. So I'll change that. Yeah. The most easiest way to um, get to the styles one touch setting is to hold down shift along with pressing the voice button. Hold down shift and voice. And it takes you straight to the styles one touch setting. Let me do another example. So I'll change the voice. Uh, let's just say this style, for example, pop shuffle one. Go to voice. I've changed the voice. And to get to the styles one touch setting, hold down shift and press voice. And it takes you to the one touch setting voice of that style. Uh, let me just show you one more example. So I, I um, changed a different style. So let's just take this one, for example, 80s rock. So I've been changing split and dual voice for this instance. But in order to get to that style's one touch setting, again, you hold down shift and press voice and it takes you to distortion guitar for that style. So there you go. And that is one touch setting. Now there are 290 styles on this keyboard. Each has a one touch setting. And in order to get to it easily, just hold down shift and press the voice button. Or you can scroll through it with this dialer here, or you can just use the categorize buttons, holding shift and portable gram button to change the categorize buttons into numbers. So zero, zero, zero. And it takes you straight to the one touch setting of the style. So that is one touch setting. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is song recording, in which you can record tracks using this here five track sequencer. We've got five tracks for the melodies, and the last track is for a compliment. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples. I'm going to record a song completely from scratch using the voices, and the second example, I'll be recording a song using a compliment. Okay, so first of all, we just press record. And now the keyboard waits for us to record. Um, so the, key the keyboard waits for us to start playing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the tempo. And what will really help is if we press the metronome button to keep in time. So I'm just going to turn the tempo down a bit. There we go. But before I record, I better find the, the voice. So for this example, um, oops, uh, yes. So select voice, I'm going to select a drum kit. Yep, yeah. okay, so I'm gonna select that sound. Okay, so now we're ready to record and we can select which one we want to record. So the, the keyboard's saying, um, yep, track one. Or maybe you want track two or track three, we just hold down record 
and press one of these tracks. Make sure we got our voice selected. Okay, and now the keyboard waits for us to play. I'm gonna use the metronome because that will help in keeping me in time. And now the keyboard waits for us to play. Oh, sorry, that wasn't that, um, that wasn't in time. <laughs> okay, so we made an error. Okay, so in order to clear a track, we hold down Shift, press that, and it says clear track one. Enter. Sure. Enter again. And then we deleted that track. So I'll do that again because I know that wasn't in time. I've got to follow the metronome. One, two, three, four. So now we got the first track recorded. Okay, and now I'm going to select a different sound for track two. So we go to voice. This time I'm going to do a synth bass. Okay, we'll select that voice. We hold down record. Hold down record and we're going to select track two this time and now the keyboard waits for us to play here we go i know it wasn't perfect but this is just just an example to show you how to record songs okay so now we're going to select a voice for we're going to do a pad so we're going to go to choir and pad so we're going to find a synth pad One second. Okay, we're going to do that one. So... Okay. So we're going to add the pad now. So we hold down record and yeah, press record, then hold record and track three. And now the keyboard waits for us to play. So here we go. So now we've got the pad recorded. Okay, even though you can record up to five tracks, I am going to do one more example. So this song will be a, a full track song. So now I'm going to select a different sound. I'm going to select synth. Anyone will do. Okay, so we press record and we're going to hold record and press track four. And now the keyboard waits for us to play. Here we go.
or you can just press start to record. <laughs> And there you go. And that's our whole song recorded completely from scratch. So that's the example of recording a song completely from scratch using the five track sequencer. And now this time, I'm going to record a song using a compliment style. So, first of all, we're going to select a style. Um, doesn't really matter which one for this example. So maybe, um, let's see here. So we're going to use this style. We're going to select a voice. So I'm going, I am going to select, oh, sorry. Didn't realize that I was still in the style section. There we go. In voice section, we're going to select a steel guitar. Okay. And now we're going to press record. Well, first of all, I'm just going to do the um, chord progressions with the um, style. Make sure, make sure that a comp is on. Yep, we press record. Track one will be overwritten. Oh, we don't want to do that yet. So, okay. We'll select user two then. There we go, user two. And we're going to hold, press, hold down record and a compliment. So we got a style. So, well, actually, the um, it will record automatically. So I don't have to press anything. So here we go. Oh, sorry. That was my fault. We'll delete that. Oops. So yes, we need um to record the style this time. Select style. Record. And we want a compliment. Here we go. So I'm just going to Play a few chord progressions. Okay, so I recorded some a, a few chord progressions. So now it's sound like this. And now, yeah, we've got the right sound we want. Um, we're going to press record and we're going to do a couple of tracks on the left on the um the melody so we're gonna press record and we're gonna hold down track one. Oh, it's already been highlighted so my bad okay so now the keyboard waits for us to play here we go All 
flow wasn't perfect, but it's just an example. So now we have this. Okay, so that's done. And now I'm going to do one more example and I'm going to select an organ sound. Yeah, that would do. Any, anything would do. Okay, so again, we just press record, hold record, and this time we're going to hold track and press track number two. And now the keyboard waits for us to play. is writing and now we got our track completed with a comp a compliment back in so now it will sound like this So that's it with the, um, the recording um, example of recording a song completely from scratch or recording a, and, and recording a song using a compliment. OK, so the last thing that I'm going to show you in terms of recording a song is to how to delete tracks. Well, I've already done it previously, but I'll show you again in order to delete a track. So we've got this for, um, for user one. <laughs> And I made track one be in the drums. So what if I want to clear that? We hold down shift along with pressing one of these six buttons. So we're going to hold down shift and track one. And it's telling me clear track one. In order to do that, we press enter. Are you sure? If you're sure, press enter. If you're having second thoughts, we press exit. But yes, I want to clear that. So we press enter again. So now the track doesn't have the drums. Or what if I want to clear the um, main melody? So I did track number four for that example. Hold down shift, track number four. Yep, clear track number four. Enter, are you sure? Enter, writing. So now I've cleared two tracks and so now I've ended up with this. going to put the keyboard back to normal as it was so there you go and that is song recording in which you can record songs completely from scratch or using an accompaniment style for a backing there are altogether 10 user songs in order for you to record your own songs and using the shift button here, you can delete tracks if you've made a mistake or if you want to add something else. So there you go. That is song recording. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you. And it's very similar to the song recording I did just now, except this time we're going to do audio recording. So. In order to do audio recording, make sure you've got a USB drive connected at the back of the keyboard. And, oh yeah, I've got a USB stick right here. Because um, let me just show you something really quickly. If I take the USB stick out, I hold down shift and press record. It come up saying no USB. So you will need a USB stick in order to do um, audio files. So let me just find the um, USB terminal. There we go. 
back in now. Okay, so just like what I did with the um, song, you press record and use the six tracks, but audio recording has nothing to do with that. Instead, hold down shift whilst pressing record so that you can record an audio file. So first of all, before I do that, I'm just going to go through some sounds and styles so that I can give you an example. So we're going to select sort of a, a synth sound. So maybe something like, and maybe do a dance sort of style. Um, yes, anyone would do. Um, so I'm just going to do that. Back to voice. And in order to start recording an audio file, hold down shift and press record. And then on the screen it says press record to start slash stop recording. So I've got to press record again and the audio will start. And when I press record again, it will stop. So, when it comes to audio recording, everything on the keyboard will be affected, including sampling, sounds, styles, microphone. So, yep, yeah, for this example, I am going to be using the microphone. So, I've, just got, I've got the microphone here, and now we... Okay. So, you can also record yourself singing as well. Okay, so I'm just going to do a few things. I'm going to press record to start recording the audio. So here we go. This is an example of audio recording. And that's my voice. Um, it affects the sampling as well. Okay, and now we're going to play a little something. And in order to stop recording the audio, we press audio again. And now it's writing onto the USB stick. So that's how you record an audio. And now we're going to play that back. Oh, before I do that, let me just show you something on, in order to play back audio files. Um, in order to play back audio files, we press song slash audio. So we press song slash audio and song slash audio again. And then that way we can play back the audio files that are on the USB stick. So here's what I've done just now. This is an example of audio recording. That was just me talking into the mic. And that was just me messing around with a couple of samples. And now here's me, yeah, there we go. press the stop button and then I'll, I'll press record to stop recording from there and there you go and that is how you record an audio file and now you can play back audio files um, from like if you've got songs that are that are a WAV file you can play them back um, for this for, for this example um, just earlier I've um, recorded a few little things on the Genos only a quick mess about on the multi pads to give you an example that I'm playing back an audio file from another keyboard so there you go audio the beat beat the beat beat
So that's an example of the playback from other devices. Like for example, I've used the Genos for this. Um, I've messed around with a couple of um, beatbox multi-pads. So nothing major, it's just a little example. And I've done another one. I know it looks like it has the same file name, but this one's Audio File, um, Audio 5. Um, something I just quickly recorded some more multi-pads on the Genos, uh, this time using guitar sounds. So there you go, that was just a couple of, of examples. Um, I've recorded those on the Genos, just to give you an example of the audio playback. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so there you go. And that is audio recording, in which you can record audio files and audio playback, so you can play back the files that you've got. Um, you can have, yes, the audio affects everything on this keyboard, like it affects me talking into the microphone, the sampling, sounds and styles, everything. Um, and also when, when it comes to audio playback, you can play back songs that are in WAV file because they will only play back in WAV format, so you can't have them as MP3 format, for instance. Though on higher keyboards, such as the Genos, uh, the PSR SX100, you can do MP3 playback. And if I remember, I think you can also record MP3 files on Genos. So yep, you can record, you can play back anything really. That's um, a WAV file, whether it comes from this keyboard, another keyboard, or any other device, such as like any songs, for example, and so on. And that is audio recording. Okay, so now the last thing that I'm going to show you on part two of this tutorial of the Yamaha PSR EW425 keyboard, and that is quick sampling. Okay, so the keyboard already has built-in samples that you can overwrite. So here are the, here are the um, presets. And in order to loop them, we just hold down this loop hold button and it just loops over and over. But in order to um, have them stop at the same time, we just hold down shift and loop hold. So I'll show that to you. And there we go. And that's just a quick of the, um, the preset sample. Uh, I'm gonna show you something else within the um, sampling. We go to the function. Just gonna find this. Yes, um, there's just um, the sample volume within the function. So I'll show that to you. Oh, and each, I think that each, yeah, pad A, pad B, pad, so each pad can be adjusted when it comes to volume. So pad A is currently quiet, while the other pads are remaining the um, preset volume. And then we have say, for example, pad C, enter, oh, sorry, yep, sample volume, and press C, and now we can turn that up, like and turn it down again. It. 
So that's just a quick function of the sample volume and the preset samples. Okay, so now we're going to do some sampling. Um, I will be doing a few examples when it comes to sampling. Um, I'm going to do an example of talking into the mic, which will pick up my voice and that will be as a sample. And I've got my Genos right here in which I'll be doing some more examples. And I've also got an iPad in which I will show you as well for the um, examples of doing quick sampling. So first of all, I've got my microphone here. And in, in order to get a sample, we just press capture. It comes up on the screen saying quick sampling mode. Press A and D. And in order to start sampling, we press the button again and then it will start sampling. So you notice that I'm making a sound, but it's not automatically sampling because we need to press it again. So I'm just going to press that and start sampling. This is an example of the quick sampling. press it again to write it and now that sample button should be my voice just waiting for it to finish writing okay so now that's been saved so this is an example uh, turn it up a bit there we go Oops, what am I doing? Exit that. Okay, I don't know what I've done there. This is an example. Oh, there we go. This is an example of the quick sampling. Then we're going to loop, we can loop that. This is an example of the quick sampling. This is an example of the quick sampling. Okay. So that's the um, example of using a microphone. And now I do have a wire connected to the, aux the auxiliary input, which is connected to the output of my Genos. So right now I'm just going to go to the Genos. I've chose the gospel ad lib kit. So we've got this. One, two, three, four, clap. And I'm going to sample something from that. Um, for this example, I'm going to press capture. This time we're going to select sample button B. And then we're going, I'm going to go to my Genos and play a few things. So here we go. I press the button B again so that I can start recording. One. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, clap. So now that's been saved. Because it's a sample, it takes time to, um, it takes time for it to um, load it up. But it says, it says writing. Um, sometimes it can take a while. Shouldn't take too long now. Any second now. Okay, so now we've got um, quick sampling B sampled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, clap. And we can loop these this two. This is an example. Of... One, this is two, an example three, four, of the five, quick... six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, clap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, clap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, clap. One. Okay, so so far, um, when it comes to sampling, that was that was the example of talking to the microphone and adding it as a sample, and. Sample B was recording a 
a sample from another keyboard, such as my Genos over there. Okay, so for the last example with the quick sampling, um, as you can see here, I've got my iPad there and I've got a video of somebody playing the drums. So I'm going to add that as a sample. So again, we're just gonna go to capture. Yep, so we've got, we're now on quick sampling mode. And this time we're going to press C. Uh and then I'm going to start the sampling and play the iPad at the same time. So it picks up the um, video of somebody playing the drums. Okay, now that that's done. Okay, that was um, the iPad there. The keyboard is now writing that um, sample. This one's a bit longer, so it's taken a bit of time. And there we go. We'll get out of capture mode. And now we've got the drummers. A sample of somebody playing the drums. Okay, so that's the quick sampling. So, I've got a microphone recording with a sampling, a recording of um, some, um, something I've done on the Genos and a sample of somebody playing the drums. So here's the microphone. This is an example of the quick sampling. And the Genos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, clap. And a video of a sample of somebody playing drums. And now we're going to loop them all together. This is an example of the quick So that's quick sampling. And now, in order to clear the samples, we go to capture mode, quick sampling mode. And in order to clear the samples that I've done so that we can go back to the presets, we hold down shift along with pressing either sampling A, B, C or D. So hold down shift and it's telling me to clear sample, which um, for this example is um, me talking into the microphone. We press enter, sure. And there you go. That's my sample erased. And now we've got the preset again. Hold oh, one sec. Let me just get out of there. There we go. But the other two remains untouched. One, two, three. Haven't done anything for sample D. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. So there you go. And that is quick sampling. In which we can sample things via microphone or from a different instrument. Or if you connect an iPad to the auxiliary input you can record samples like watching videos on YouTube and you think, oh, I like that sound. I'm going to sample it. We can do that. And also I connected my Genos via the outputs of the Genos to the auxiliary input of the PSR EW425. So I can show an example of the sampling that way as well. And that is quick sampling. Oh, and one more thing. Um, yes, about the um, the quick sampling, as I've mentioned on my first tutorial, um, that I actually preferred the sampling of the PSR EW410 because you had sample zones on the keys here. 
But on the EW425, you're only restricted to four of these buttons here. And four buttons only. And when it comes to the, the um, sample zone here on the EW410, you can like mess around with the sample and do like sort of pitch um, shifts and everything like that. But I don't think you can do that on the EW425 because you only have the four quick sampling buttons there. So that is quick sampling. OK, so this is now the end of the second and final part of the tutorial of the Yamaha PSR EW425 keyboard. I do hope you have enjoyed this second tutorial video and that you have found it useful as well as my first video as well. So please do write back to me and tell me what you think. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next video in which will be part one of showing the 820 voices.